Um, if you look at the timeline from when microRNAs were first discovered back in 93 with Victor Ambrose in the C. elegans system, and then in 2000 with LET7, and uh, that it was basically discovered both in worm and in humans, there's basically been an explosion, I think, of, um, first of all, identifying microRNAs that are involved in a particular process, but also the development of therapies um, or potential therapies uh, to knock down, or in some cases, uh, overexpress a particular microRNA. And that's really important because um, we know that microRNAs are important for normal cellular function and that they can be dysregulated in disease states, um, notably in cancer. But in fact, a lot of the first uh, inhibitor strategies to, to block microRNA function really came out of work in the cardiovascular system and some of um, uh, some other systems as well. Um, and I'm just showing in this graph here toward the latter half of the last decade and into this decade, we are essentially utilizing new uh, chemistries that involve LNAs and other anti-mere strategies. Um, and some of these are um, now making their ways into the clinic, it's phase one trials. And there are other companies that are developing molecules that are in preclinical phase. And so essentially, I think there's been a rebirth now of interest in determining whether or not a, a particular microRNA could have some therapeutic value in a particular disease um, or for a particular indication. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com webinars.